Welcome to the Nat and Sarah Show, where we aim to touch, move, and inspire you every single week. Really? We're really going to introduce our own show? Maybe we should leave it to the pro. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. One second, ladies. Here we go. Sarah Maxwell and Natalie Cook are experts in visualization and deliberate use of the law of attraction. As dynamic world athletes representing Canada and Australia in beach volleyball, they honed in on achievement at the highest level. Winning an Olympic gold medal on her home beach of Bondi is a pinnacle example. Their powerful techniques transmute the spiritual to the tangible, allowing thousands of their community members to bring their vision boards to life. Recently, they've taken their expertise on the road as the full-time family, where they inspire, coach, and lead people to create their unique, deliberate family life using a simplified three-step process. Welcome to the Nat and Sarah Show. Join us for twice-weekly episodes. Each week, Nat and Sarah will teach us how to deliberately create results in all areas of life using their unique three-step process. Not only that, they'll also sit down with some of their favorite high achievers who have manifested what most merely dream about. Are you a member of the community? Go to bit.ly slash the Nat and Sarah show to download your three-step journal to follow along with each workshop style teaching episode and get ready to take action on your inspirations. Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of the Nat and Sarah show. Why is your name first? Well, we tossed it around a little bit. You know, the Sarah and Nat show does not sound as good as the Nat and Sarah show. What do you reckon? No, I'm going to go with the fact that N comes before S in the dictionary and that will keep our relationship alive so that she feels good about it. Alphabetical order. I love it. So smart. Look how good we look. Oh, we have makeup on. We made an effort. We made an effort. Usually it's in pajamas and uh, podcasts where there's no visual, but this first one where we wanted to introduce ourselves, we've gone to a little bit of effort. You look great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We are going on date night, so the mascara was out anyway. So it sort of <laughs> fe- sort of felt like, let's make the podcast visual for our very first one because you may never see us looking like this again. And for those of you that don't think we look great, it can actually be worse yeah. than this. Lie to us. That's good. Mm-hmm. Now, date night, we do this as often as we can, especially when we have a little one. But I don't even know where we're going because I like surprises and you don't. No, I don't like surprises because I'm a bit of the control freak. And so here I am organizing it. I'm feeling really good about it. My so, favorite food's Indian. Are we going to Indian? What's your favorite? Why food? do you always guess? I hate that you always guess because then oh. I can't lie. I can't even. Oh, we are. woo <laughs> Okay, um, well, she your, wasn't supposed to find that out. Your but favorite food is? Greek. So, Indian I, so and Greek. I am Mediterranean at heart. I really think that's what happened. This is a Canadian accent, but somewhere along the line, there was Mediterranean. And somewhere along the line, you there have Indian. There was some curry along the way. but Get it, India. That's our favorite <laughs> foods. You will find out so much more about us on this Nat and Sarah show over the time. Nat and Sarah, Nat and Sarah, Nat and Sarah. Better than Sarah, Nat. Better than... You're so annoying. Okay, okay so but I'm what, the deep one. What are we... Oh, you're the deep one. I'm the deep one, oh. and I'm going to give you content, and Nat will have you laughing. Because the actual intention, we do have an intention, there is an aim here, is to provide a space where you can laugh your way to your best life. Because that's coming up a little bit later in the show, but I'm going to show you some of the things that Nat has taught me over our lifetime together, and one of them is that laughter truly is the best medicine. And I also think it's a relationship elixir. So that's why we're actually Ooh. elixir. That's, See, a, big that's word. a big word. What does that mean? Higher education. What does it mean? Elixir? Yeah. A mix. A mix. Like a chemical mix. Yeah, okay, cool. And if I'm wrong, I don't want to know. Don't tell <laughs> me in the notes. <laughs> so, okay, so what, the, what can they expect? So what's the deal? We're not just going to belly laugh you, but ultimately that is the intention, that you can live your best life laughing your way there. It really does happen that way. So every week we are going to create and bring you two episodes. The first episode, two. I know, Nat is totally freaking out. I'm freaking out. Like two? Commitment phobic right here. <laughs> Cannot deal with it. Even though I we've married t- you twice. Yes. Okay. We can. That's weird. We'll get to that in a second. We have been together for 18 years. And so over that time, I have convinced her through hypnosis that I'm the best thing that ever happened to her. So you're also going to get relationship advice, but that isn't, you know, going to be our total sole focus. 
Okay, you got me off track. Two episodes. First episode, workshop style. So we're going to be teaching and training on how we use our three-step process. What the heck's three-step process? Yeah, we made it up, but it's really awesome, and it leads to good things. That's good. We made it up because we use it. We okay. use it, and have we do. continue to use we're it. We're using it right now, and that's why you're so excited and so on the ball. But Creating you can... this show, we had to use it. So bit.ly slash... What's next? Nat and Sarah show. Okay. That's where you can learn about the three-step process for the first time. But we are going to be talking about it all the time. But for some of you that like to see it written in bold letters, that's where you can do it. You can also get your downloadable worksheets because this is Nat's passion, is that we don't just want to get inspired and have concepts, another concept, because we all have enough of those. We really want to bring you some change in your life, some transformation. And we believe that's through actioning your inspiration. Actually, it's really important. This is the most important bit, as Sarah said, that I want to see people take the concept, like sitting on a mountain, like, um, um. and put it into your life, put it into your practice. And that takes a little bit of thought, a little bit of action, a little bit of journaling. Mm. Um, and I saw it for the first time. I sat and had an intellectual conversation with a very good friend, and I thought, He's nailed it. He's got everything. He's got all the concepts. He's perfect. He's going to be awesome at this. And then all of a sudden when you had to put step one into action, it was like, uh. Mm -hmm. So intellectually is one thing. Being able to make it real and physically in your life is another thing. And so I think that's why for those of you that are seeing us visually, I'm in red and Nat's in stripes because we bring a different dimension to each thing. And so we think that combining those two things can lead to actually manifesting the dreams that you have for your life. So episode two, so the first episode that we do is workshop style. With your worksheets, you can download them, like I said, and we're teaching you the three-step process. And can we, we go back and forth with real life stories? The second episode is what we're calling The Conversation Continues. And we're inviting our high-achieving friends to come and have a conversation with us. But not just the kind of conversation that is planned. This is the kind of conversations that we're having when the cameras aren't on, when the record button is off, after the show. So we really want to sort of, you know take the curtains and open things up so that you get a view of what some high achieving people in different areas of life, whether it's their work life, it's sport life, if it's creative life, whatever area that you can get a glimpse of people who are using this three step process in their life every day to create incredible results. Juicy bits, the unplugged, unplugged bits mm. that they would probably not say in a formal interview. That's what, and that's what you're awesome at and how you create that space to bring out some of the things that they probably would normally not say. So that's where the good, fun stuff is going to be. So see how she's saying nice stuff because we're going on date night? This is good. This is, these are like relationship nuggets. And so should you tell people that you're, oh no, we're going to talk about who we are in a sec. But before we go there, I would love for you to, you can all do this and prove that you have fingers, bit.ly slash Nat and Sarah show. Get your downloadables right now. Go get your journal. Go get, learn what your three-step process is so that you can imagine if you started to believe in your dreams again. Imagine if you could create a new life story. What if you actually knew the skills and tools to live into your possibilities? Would you be bold enough to sign up for your own life? That's the question. It's a big question. Often, you know, people driving in traffic and thinking about, I would love life to be different, but do they really want it to be different? Are they willing to take some uncomfortable steps to get to a different outcome and maybe be driving the other way in the traffic so you're not in that peak hour? Are you willing to be bold enough to do something for your own life right now? And so Nat and I wanted to really introduce ourselves to you guys. Um, we don't have long to do it, but we wanted to give a little bit of background of where we've had to step forward, where boldness was required, and where we were freaking scared, you know, and there was a lot of uncertainty. So we just want to describe the life of a Canadian girl and an Australian girl. So you've got, you know, girl in the igloo, and all you Canadians are going to hate that analogy right there. 
but we're just really trying to make the contrast that here I was in Canada. I grew up in the French part of Canada in Montreal. So it was freaking cold, minus 30. And, you know, I always had a dream for my life, even in the very coldest days that I was waiting for the bus to go to school, I had a dream that I wanted to be an athlete. I always wanted to be. I was really good at sport. I could try everything and generally it went well for me and I always wanted to commit my life to that. And I was very much a repetition person. I was a little kid who would go out in the backyard and kick the soccer ball a hundred times, you know, and just watch the different ways that I could do it. And so I've always been a really dedicated um student of life, I guess. And for me, that was always centered around sport. So I always felt that, hey, what if I could take this discipline and take it the whole way? And for me, the whole way was the Olympics. And the only way that I initially knew how to do this was doing backflips off my picnic table in the winter and the summertime. Um, it doesn't hurt as much into snow. But yeah, I really visualized myself as a gymnast. So when I started gymnastics and I noticed that I was a foot taller than every other kid there and that my body was a lot stronger looking than a lot of the kids there, I started to wonder if gymnastics was really going to be my vehicle. So, you know, what were you doing, Matt, over there in Australia with the kangaroos? Well, I was born a couple of years earlier and <laughs> let me tell you that more grays. back flips off your picnic table into sand would be way better than into snow. So born in the tropics of Australia, North Queensland, a place called Townsville. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those kids that wanted to be the best very early on. Um, for me, uh, like I was in the newspaper when I was four for <laughs> sculpturing, probably Play-Doh or clay or something at the kindergarten. And that started my journey of wanting to be... <laughs> I didn't you know, know that about you. Yeah, see, you're going to learn. Plant, mm -hmm. Sarah's going to learn a lot. So um, I really wanted to be the best, and I thought the reason for that, in hindsight, um, was because I thought I would get more love from my family or my grandparents or friends or family. Little did I know along the way that friends don't like that too much when you try and be the best at everything. Especially so did you have a lot of friends at school, Matt? No, I didn't have many <laughs> friends at school and I didn't understand why. I probably do now, but I didn't at the time. I wanted to be the teacher's pet. I wanted to be the best at it. So I'd go home and granddad would say, what did you win today? How did you win today? How much did you win by today? We'll get into some of those stories later. But the concept there for me mm. was I really want to be the best. Mm. And, and by the way, I live with this every single day. So if you want to feel sorry for me, this is the time. I'm growing out of it a little bit. Yeah, she's had lots of therapy. Therapy's good. <laughs> yeah, so I started on the other side of the world in Australia, um, in a in not in a bikini, but in shorts and a t shirt while you were in your igloo. Okay, wait, but tell okay. Eating mangoes for from any the of you, mango trees. For any of you from cold climate at Christmas time, imagine getting a bikini. Like like your top well, in Australia they call them togs. Like your bathing suit or togs. For Christmas, like for me, who calls him a bathing suit. Like that's a bit old, know. buddy, daddy. You know, everybody who calls it that, it's going to be irritated with you. Um, wait till, wait till they hear some of your lingo. She already said some stuff that I was going to make a joke about, but I thought no, let's Google. ease into it gently. If you don't know, Google, Google, pick up the uh, larrikinisms and the sarcasms and the slang. Yeah, if you don't understand her, Siri doesn't either. Because when you try to speak to Siri, Siri only understands me. Just saying. Okay, hold on. Anyway, well, okay, okay, about? let's move. <laughs> Let's move this on. For those of you that are just enthralled with our lives, continue tuning in. Because I then went to the University of British Columbia. And the only reason I share this with you is that I traveled from my French-speaking part of Canada all the way to the mountains in BC. And one of the things that happened for me there, I, I chose my degree of biopsychology because I, it was an elitist choice. You know, it was like, okay, I'm interested in the behavior of people, but, oh, let me do the science part of that. Let me study the chemicals of the brain. And I have to say that even though I chose that, I think for actually probably not the best reasons, the thing I got out of it was it's more the behavior that can affect the chemistry of the brain that really excited me. So I think, you know, your life takes the path that it's meant to take, even if you make decisions based on pride or ego. Um... Thanks to Eckhart Tolle. If you haven't read, Google him. Um, read The Power of Now. Thank you to studying that, those books and those concepts over the years to realize that we all have an ego. 
It's just identifying when it's playing its part and when it's living you instead of you actually living your life. So, so we all do. So I've got one too. Yeah, that's is really big, so, like kind of huge, and it can hardly fit in the screen. No, right come now. on, that's not true. It, it and you need if you want to win Olympic gold medal, sometimes you do need. One they don't of even those. know. I know, but I just sort of throw it out there because it's, it's a good time. But for me, okay, wait, 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 wait. Still going. Now I gotta still. Here's the thing. See, You're about to find out that she won Olympic gold medal, and I didn't. So let me go first. This is like opening one gift, the small gift, before the big gift. Okay? Okay? So so here we go. Give me my moment. Okay. So here's a moment. I play for Team Canada. I played indoor volleyball. And you know what I actually learned from that is what I didn't want. My dream, I told you that I want to be an athlete. And then I thought, I want to represent Canada. That's the dream. And honestly, representing my country in indoor volleyball was an experience of many of the things that I didn't want as an athlete. And I can't say enough that all experiences are valuable. <laughs> they all play their part if you know how to read them and if you don't get depressed enough to not be able to actually utilize that to live your best life. So I did want to share that I played for Team Canada and then I ended up playing beach oh, volleyball later. Canada. Do I say anything about, yeah, I'm going to keep going. Get, what, what? I'm, I'm the talker. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So I played beach volleyball for nine years for Canada, and the reason why I wanted to share that is because I never wore a bathing suit in my whole life until I was 18 years old. Okay, you know what I mean. Like actual flesh revealing, butt exposing bathing suit in public. Like I went to the pool parties in shorts and a t-shirt. Like that was just how I rolled. So when the opportunity to play beach volleyball, and again, this whole idea of going to the Olympics, came out and I realized, hey, I don't want the indoor volleyball situation, but beach volleyball, the problem was these bum revealing uniforms. And so the first time that I ever, are you yawning because I'm talking? No. So for those, okay. <laughs> she just no, yawned. I if you're, if you're, yawn. Okay. I was like, oh, bum revealing. Like, oh, oh, shocking. I thought you were yawning. No, I wasn't Oh yawning. my gosh. That no. was. But I can if you want me to. It happens. She, she does yawn and fall asleep sometimes. But anyways, back to the bikini. The reason that I feel that that story is so impactful is because I said no to my dream, my possible dream of going to the Olympics because of a fear, a body fear. And it was so deep and it was so ingrained. And there was just no way that I was going to move forward with bum revealing as the, the way through. And I just... I can't describe exactly what shifted me except that I realized that I was allowing my fear to live my life and it was actually going to determine my dream. So early on, I, I was kind of like tapping around with this idea that maybe fear didn't mean stop. And I'm going to come back later how, mm. how Nat has been really influential in my life to help me grow in that area, but I'm going to let her talk. So is it my turn? <laughs> yes. Like, sorry. Do I need a piece of tape? Go. Okay. Hurry up. Okay. What do you mean hurry up? So... My, again, we've got the Canadian girl and the Aussie girl, so I'm over there going through my high school, um, not having many friends because I try and win at everything. I ended up being the Ducks, D-U-X, of the school, right? This is that ego part. We talked about ego earlier. Um, and the Ducks of the school, again, you could Google, look up what that means, but it's the top of the school, like the top of the school in academic so not only was I sporty, this is why I had really had no friends, but I was academic at the top of the school as well, which meant I could choose physiotherapy or actually I chose to be wanting to be a doctor at first because that was the highest um, oh, elitism, as well. elitism yeah, same true. as you, parallel. And look, and we found each other. Yeah, we found each other. just oh, so beautiful. Across the, the ditch. Oceans. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't really want to be a doctor. I just put it down because I could. And then I changed it to a physiotherapist because that's what I thought I wanted to do. Uh, I remember sitting with my dad watching a football match and because he loved rugby league. Sorry, football all over the world is different. So rugby league. Um, my dad was actually a professional soccer player, um, but he loves rugby league. And we would watch it together and the players would run into each other and fall over and not get up and out would come a little man with a bucket and a sponge and he'd put the sponge on the little man and up he'd get. And I was young at the time. I said, Dad, what's that? I want to do that. And Dad said, that's a physiotherapist. 
So I wanted to be a physiotherapist and I also had the dream at the similar time I was eight years old um, and I wanted to be an Olympian. I saw one of our Aussie swimmers, Lisa Curry, win a gold medal um, in the 100 metres freestyle in swimming, which is one of our famous uh, Olympic sports. She got out of the pool, she put her green and gold tracksuit on, she stood on top of the podium, tears streaming down her eyes, singing Advance Australia Fair and I said, I want to do that. So I had physiotherapy and an Olympic dream going at the same time from about eight years old. And again, I didn't know how that was going to happen. I, did, I just, I knew I had a passion lit in my stomach and that's what I wanted to do. You know, what you got me thinking about is people who are listening, if you have any children who are younger than eight years old, the the stories that we're both describing are really ingraining and settling in at that age and just hearing that story it reminded me of how important it is to showcase um, important things for your kid your kids and so if you're becoming a little bit inspired about that you know continue to listen in because we we have been kind of uncovering this over the years trying to really um, unlock it because we have a three-year-old and so you know as as she begins her journey um, and we'll, we'll talk a lot about her because <laughs> she's a big part of our life. But um, I know some of you are sitting there as parents thinking, wow, you know, what images are filling my child's mind right now? And what are they beginning to commit to? And what are they beginning to say I want to do for the rest of my life? So mm. pretty big stuff. And, and then on that, what example are you setting for that as well? Yeah. I mean, there's so many layers here. And, and over the course of the show, many, many shows – we will uh, go into many more stories because mm. um, what then ended up happening is I became an Olympian. Mm. Uh, I went to physiotherapy school for two years and decided that that wasn't for me. I was better as a, a patient um, <laughs> getting treatment by the physiotherapist as an athlete. I ended up going to five Olympic Games, winning mm. an Olympic bronze medal, Olympic gold medal in the sport of beach volleyball for Australia. Um, and the Olympic movement became my life, training for an Olympic Games once every four years as the dream became my life. And, you know, not every time, everyone has the dream. Every athlete that wants to go to the Olympics have, has the dream of wanting to win an Olympic gold medal. I know. And couldn't you have given me one Olympics? Like, it's kind of selfish. <laughs> if I Let's could have, be- I, absolutely, if I could have cut one off and given it to you, I would have done that. For you, because I love you so much. And and I love that Nat's saying that because the dream was the same. Like I also had an Olympic dream and I had a gold medal dream. And I remember my coach in high school, and so a tribute to you, Steve Layton, over at BHS in Montreal, he said to me, he said, if you have a dream, surround yourself with that dream. And at the time, I thought, what does that mean? You know, and what I first did was I read books about Olympians and then um, in North America, we got the opportunity in 1996 that Atlanta was hosting the Olympic Games. And he said, he said, Sarah, this is that moment. This is where you surround yourself with Olympics. This is what you do. And I thought, oh, OK. And, and it, that began this process of me volunteering for the Olympics. And, and a really cool thing happened that has only become serendipitous later is that I actually saw Nat compete Without knowing who she was, I just noticed the underdog Australian team competing for the bronze medal at the Atlanta Olympics because I was working the beach volleyball venue. Even though I wasn't a beach volleyball player yet, that was the venue where I ended up working. And I ended up trading my working uniform with her Australian brother, her brother, who later found a photo that we took together um, and showed it to me. So serendipity, I believe. That is like That is trippy. That, when like, we found that out, like some... 10, 15 years later, that was my brother, like get this, my brother met Sarah in mm. 1996. Four years before we met. Four years before we met. Yeah, and it only 20, no, sorry, only 17 years later did we realize that that occurred <laughs> yeah. through a photo. So it, it's pretty amazing 
how life actually is supporting you. Like that's what I loved about that story. I was like, you know what? Life is working out for me. And I really want to share with you that life is working out for you. The day I found out that I didn't miss the train, that I'm not behind, that I didn't win a gold medal and I'm still going to be okay and I can still make a contribution and I can still live my dream life. And just because I didn't go to the Olympics, all is not lost. If anything, it was the fine tuning, you know, that I needed to be able to, to actually be the breath for others, to actually be the uplifter that I think I was born here to be. So it's funny how things that at the time seem quite devastating are actually helping to shape you. You know, like I always visualize and Nat and I talk about this like sandpaper, you know, sandpaper against wood is quite gritty and it, it can feel aggressive, but ultimately it's smoothing out the surface and smoothing out the edges. That's, that's what happens with our bikinis. Sandpaper, smoothing out the edges. Exfoliation. Yeah. Now, did you ever see that movie with Gwyneth Paltrow, that sliding doors movie? You mentioned a train mm. uh, and, and I love that movie because parallel lives we clearly had parallel lives and we were both having similar dreams at a similar time mm. and different outcomes for different reasons and it's just you gotta sometimes just keep going because I thought we would win the Olympic gold medal in 1996 when we mm. came third little did I know I would have to wait four years and sometimes people just give up on their dreams a little bit too early because on that piece of paper it mm. says it should happen earlier. But you know what? If you had won your gold medal in 96, you potentially wouldn't have won it on your home soil. So Nat ended up winning a gold medal on the home beach in Bondi. Mm. And, and, and I think sometimes our logical mind wants it to happen, like you said, on paper in a certain way. But life has a plan that is so much grander than even what you can visualize mm. and even what you can conjure. So... Isn't that awesome? So whatever you're dreaming right now, and you may feel challenged by it, you might feel like, hey, you know what? That dream isn't happening for me. The good news is not only can it happen, but it can happen even better. And so we would... We have our, so many know, stories okay. to tell. We, we, okay. the, this, this we, it's are, time to sort of wind. Are we going to tell them our love, like... Oh, we have so many. We haven't even We have started. a lot to share, but basically here's the thing. You got the See, Canadian. We had, a, we had a plan for this show and it hasn't even gone to plan because we are running out of time. Yeah, we but we sure... have to share that part, I think. Okay. So, okay. so all we wanted to share was the fact that these two girls from different continents ended up, you know, like bouncing their way. So I ended up in Australia and Nat and I ended up getting together in 2001 and I've never been with a woman before. So that was a little confronting. Um but not as much as you'd think. And so here we are 18 years later with a three-year-old, happy as Larry, clearly. Can't you hear it? Um, Married but, twice. Yeah. Well, once on our own terms and once now it's legal in Australia. High five to the Aussies. <laughs> Nat's dad thought it was legal the first time. That was a little bit of a thing for him. Yeah. We didn't mean to trick anybody. It was confronting for him. It was found out. He's like, you can't get married twice. We're like, well, the first one wasn't legal. I know, and he was like, he didn't know. But that's, okay. So there's show. lots of stories, there's lots of shows. However, imagine if you had to play for your competitive life against your loved one. And that's what Nat and I did for nine years. And, you know, our world circuit, all the other countries used to think it was pretty funny watching the married couple or watching us compete against each other. But the one thing I will say is there is nothing more challenging than that. So after we've done that, everything feels easy. Yeah. Would you agree with that? It just feels, everything feels easier than that. Totally. And especially when, you, you know, we're nice. sh sharing a hotel room and Sarah beat me once and I put all the bags out the front of the hotel room. So she's a really bad loser. <laughs> well, when you win all the time, it's, you oh. know, got to practice. I don't really want to practice losing. So, okay. I don't want to Can do we that. pause? Did everybody hear that? Do you yeah. hear what I lived through? <laughs> But we are going to deconstruct that, yeah. that environment a little bit because some, some things really came up for me around losing and winning and love. And th there's a lot there, actually, when you compete for your results with somebody that you love. And I don't know that many people experience that. I don't wish it on you. However, it does on you. We fell in love competing against each other. So like you said, everything else is easy. Gravy. Okay, so here's what we want to do now. We want to go through what the other one has taught us 
because we feel that we are always being mentored and learning from the people around us. And so since she's there all the time, I've learned a lot. And the number one thing that I remember right from the beginning is that she taught me my very first woohoo-y thing, which is quite ironic because I'm the woohoo-y one now. But she gave me a book called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. And what this book showed me was a whole new realm that I hadn't seen before. And I was already being exposed to that through our relationship. I never even used the word energy before we met. And now I feel that energy is the unseen force that is operating all of life. And so that's a pretty big change. So what'd you learn from me? Pop, pop. Oh, okay. Well, we've got big lists. And yep. again, we'll go through all that. So go. The, uh, you taught me that crying is not a weakness. Right, and I That's used to I used one. to hold back my tears, thinking that that would show some weakness. And um, it really, what I've learned is that through our vulnerability becomes our greatest teacher and our greatest healer. And so that is what you've, one of the things, hmm. one of the many that you've taught me. Awesome. What else? So we can we? cry on the show. Yeah. But you taught me that not caring what people think like that. I remember I went to a self-development workshop and that was up at the front in the first row because that's how she rolled and the music comes on and let's just say Nat's got skills. Maybe it's not dancing, but hey. maybe. Hey. But here's the point. It doesn't matter. She's dancing right now if you're on visual. You know, if you want to watch us on YouTube, I'm sure you really <laughs> want to see this. Um, but it was the fact that in my view, I was spending so much effort being cool in the back, not dancing because I was not wanting to be look bad and seeing her up there so free there was something driving me towards that there's such a freedom about not living your life according to the good opinions of others and i know that on some deep cosmic level i was seeking that and and i think i just like a moth to a flame you know i i needed to understand and be around that so you taught me that thank you and 18 years later still learning like it's not like you get that Mm. But well, I, I don't have it. No, not yet. She's getting better, way better. So the number two thing, not in any order, but the second thing, um, back to our love story, Sarah said to me very early on, I'm not asking you to marry me. You have to ask me. So I'm like, what? So as she may have alluded to, you might have picked it up, the commitment phobia I had sort of a bit of forever, the word for, for, for forever was a bit confronting, like I got a stutter because I thought what if in 20 years' time or in five years' time I get, you know, sick of you, bored of you, all of those things. I, that, she didn't know about the hypnosis. Yeah, the hypnosis was coming but I, I was struggling with forever. So Sarah would have these conversations, she's like, you just need some courage. I'm like, what? So I get like, stop it, stop it already. Like, no, she would tell me I needed courage which courage is a big thing in life, right? And there's a whole episode on courage, so I'm not going to go too far. Mm. You went so, to courage training, but we'll talk about that yeah, in another episode. Yeah, I went episode. to courage training with Dan Millman. So he was one of my she mentors. He must be getting, like, stocks in his book And I took saw, his course. I saw this course, courage training through knife fighting. And I thought, courage, Sarah told me I need courage. See, I want to be a teacher's pet. I have to go and do that. So we should get Dan Millman. You told me we I need... We should continue our course. Anyway, you sorry. Need, you. I'm thinking about all the cool people we can talk yeah, to. Yeah, I'm getting you excited. Told me I needed courage. That's what I went and did. Okay, I'm going to give your last two. I'm doing yours together because one's huge and it's unconditional love. Um, ever since, you know, I want to be an athlete, but I always wanted to understand this idea of loving beyond condition. And Nat taught me that you don't have to live your past. Your past doesn't have to dictate your future. And that that you can actually love somebody beyond any condition. So the conditions don't determine the love. The love is there and then. And for me, you know, I, I went on to do landmark education, that did as well, and we deepened that even more, and our relationship um, has become much more of our creation than ever before, which I'm really grateful for. And the elixir, humor. It really is the best medicine. Like, Nat is funny all the time, unless she's crying. Because I thought that's not a weakness. No, but she really is funny. And, and it's beautiful to, to see somebody be able to look at the world um, just with that little slant, you know, that 360 view of life that's a bit different than mine and being able to appreciate it, appreciate instead of be annoyed. That's a winner. Well, sometimes you call me a weirdo, but 
That's with love. Said with love. So I will join two together then. Okay. Um, two things that you have taught me is that consistency of showing up and always showing up. If if nobody else shows up, you're always going to be there. And what that breeds in people is trust. They know that if they come one one night, one show, they know you're always going to be there. The consistency Sarah has and the space she provides for others to step into their best life. And she holds a space where she believes everyone can live their dreams and everyone can have the life they believe in or desire and you hold that space mm. so graciously and uplift everybody and like it's just so amazing to watch so mm. there is never a time Sarah doesn't have a bad word to say about anyone and she holds that space so beautifully so that's what we welcome you to on our show oh isn't it nice you should, this is what we should all do with our mates is do an appreciation exercise and what we learn and what we love about them but, you know, 2019 is kicking off, and here we sit in Switzerland. So you've got the Canadian, the Aussie, who normally live in Australia, but for a year... Meeting on neutral ground. What did you call this? Our year, our, our mid 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 midlife crisis, our sabbatical, our, our midlife cleanse adventure, or something. our midlife cleanse. We, so we, st we sold all our stuff. We cleansed our we life. We cleansed our life. And we moved to Switzerland. And two years ago, I had a vision and a dream and used the three-step process, literally, um, to create and manifest living in a foreign country to be able to experience Europe with our three-year-old before she starts school. So why not kick off 2019 being what we're calling ourselves is the full-time family. Um, that has just been probably the highlight of our lives so far and we're so excited to be able to bring you the stories from abroad, the, our adventures, we, we go to the mountains a lot, we eat lots of croissants, we speak French, we do lots of crazy stuff, um, but to be honest, if we have nobody to share it with, it's not that much fun. So we're really looking forward to being able to share our adventures, our experience, our perspectives in order that you can workshop your own life. Because ultimately, these are our stories, but the ones that truly matter are your stories. Yeah, maybe you don't want to go to Switzerland. Maybe you want to go to Brazil or mm. um, Asia or North America or somewhere else in Europe, and that's your dream. And what we're creating, and as I said, the space for you to workshop, develop, hone, enhance, build a team. Uh, we're going to be bringing you real life stories of some of our high achieving friends for you to see how to manifest it in your own life mm -hmm. and it really is coming down to this three-step process as we said in the beginning we used it to create this show so we use it constantly and it has been successful so we want to bring it to you and with you Awesome. So later in the week, I want you to catch us for our first teaching and training. Like I said, download your free journal. You can also um, workshop style. This is We're really going to encourage that. So if you're someone who's jogging while you listen or listening in the car, why not commit that when you get home, you sit down with your sheets and you get to work? Because ultimately, if everything is an insight or inspiration that doesn't get actioned, I believe that it goes into this pot of your life that says, I don't believe you. Mm -hmm. And our aim is to create a space where we can remove the resistance so you can start to believe you a little bit more. And what that means is that when you say, I'm moving to Brazil with my family, not only do other people believe you, you believe you. And for many of us, this is a transition. This is a transformation worth going through so if you're bold enough like we said to sign up to your own life we're going to be doing weekly lives in the Facebook group so we are all about getting down and dirty with you um, we believe that we're all in this together and we're really looking forward to um, being able to layer the three-step process process over your life because ultimately that's what gets us up in the morning and it's not just about travel it's about anything that you desire, we will take you through the steps of dream time. We will take you through all that. Oh, yes. You might not even know what you desire yet. right? If you're sitting here going, well, I sort of got a comfortable life. It's nothing really um, for me. I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. That's that what, was my story. That's right. Yeah, totally. So we're going to kind of um, break it up a little bit, spice it up a little bit, hug, cry, 
do all that together and have a great time. And let's see where your life goes. bit.ly slash Matt and Sarah show. Okay, that's where you can reach us. Review and actually have a comment. Let people know what this is all about because the more of us that are doing it together, the more energy there are there is for this process layering over our lives. So over and out, everybody. Over and out. Date night. Woo! Thank you so much for listening to the show. Don't forget to join the community at bit.ly slash the Nat and Sarah show to download your three-step journal and participate in weekly lives found only in our private group. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've got to rate and review the show. And I know all the podcasts are always asking this. And in the past, I wasn't doing it. And the reason I wasn't doing it is because I actually didn't know how to do it. So open your podcast player and click on our show from your library, not the listen now. That's where I was going wrong in the past. So now that you know how to do it, when you go there, make sure you give us a five-star review. Five stars, five stars, five stars. And then click on write a review link to actually write a review so that you can tell other people that we're legit and even funny, maybe a bit serious. So if you want to recommend this to someone, you have to put your fingers on the keys and send us a review. Thanks.